Okay, so that was order number one of business. And order number two, a customer bought uh, this extremely special razor, the Dovo Fakabite, which is a historic forging. So Dovo uh, is, I don't know if they finished or not, but they had a large factory at uh, Buchlandstrasse 10 in North west kind of Solingen and they were there since uh, before World War II. Uh, I think they're moving to somewhere else in town and when they were moving they discovered it was a huge I went there and it was it's a really big old factory with a lot of dusty corners and so they found some forged blanks which is the cylinder of stamped into the die steel that hasn't yet been ground into a razor but that's a lot of the magic is in the forged blank. And so these forged blanks are from between 1967 to 1971, and they were stainless steel 6 8 razors uh, with a square head. And this customer bought one and asked me to hone it. Um, okay, I'll be happy to hone it. That'll be my honor, sir. And he chose number 42. All right, isn't that 42? Let's see here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's on the non-show side down at the bottom. 42 divided by 500. Okay, see that? Me, be dee. And it's a 6 8 razor. So we're going to do the old honing routine. I will try very hard to not only keep going 90 degrees, none of this off-axis shit where you try to like bend and bend and bend the edge and go bird crazy with that. I honestly have to tell you, I do get my best shaves when I go bending the, bending the edge like that consistently. Uh, but you can't do it without making marks on the razor that are strange looking. And I mean, come on, this is, this is a trophy case queen if there ever was one. So I think I will try very, very hard to be less is more. But we should go ahead and strop it one time just to hear how it sounds. This is a Dolo XL strop. And I will first try putting a two meter shape thingy behind it. And what happens when we put a longer shape behind it? This shape is about eight meters. So now you will be bringing the leather less into the bevel, so to speak, and more toward the actual apex. First thing I'm gonna do is break out my microscope and I want to show you the way that I look with my microscope to judge uh, the the shape of the bevel, okay, which is a lot more important to me than the actual fineness of the apex. I care about the shape of that little, not triangular, it's supposed to be like this and not like a perfectly flat triangle, but I want to see from the factory and I can show you with my binocular stereo microscope the way that I'm able to do that effectively. Just a second here. Okie dokie, superior shape fans and other humans. This is my binocular stereo microscope. It is labeled Celestron and it was uh, their it was their top of the line model. They don't make it anymore, but it was their, I think they called it the professional stereo microscope. Why stereo do you say? Because uh, in other videos that you watch where somebody is using a microscope to judge the edge, they're usually using, it may have two eyepieces, but it will usually have just one objective. Because when you have the two objectives, the magnification maximum is reduced significantly. Uh, but when you have one, you can get a very high magnification. However, it's a flat image, okay? It's an image that's flat. And I'm not gonna use the Facker bite for this example because I was too afraid on camera I'll mess something up. So did my old uh, serviceable Inox from 15, 20 years ago from Dolo. Okay, and uh, when you see other uh, things, you know, they'll put it down, they got the light, and they'll be putting their eyeballs into the hole, and um, they'll just be looking at the image, you know, with the lens going straight down to the thing like this. You're looking uh, on the side of the bevel. That is not how I use this, and I'm going to show you how I use it. So, my model has a zooming head, and I found because this this uh, this size is so common, I uh, let's see here. 
got these uh, Jeffrey Dahmer glasses on. I, I haven't haven't used my glasses with this thing yet. So I don't know how this is going to go. I'm getting blind in my old age. But this is what I do. So these are these are wide field 15 X's and um, so that would be 15 times the power of the head and the head goes from 0.7 to four and a half. Okay, so the minimum magnification you could use with this setup is 10 and a half unless you change the eyepiece. And then it would go all the way to 67 and a half, but ain't no damn way you're hand holding an image below that scope at 67 and a half and getting anything useful. Plus you need a lot of light for that. So what I do is I surf around a 1.0 to the 1.5 so I guess 1.5 times 2.5, no, about 22 and a half. 22 and a half is about as high as I go, and uh, 15 is about as low as I go. And I hold it like this. You see here? And I'm pointing the edge. I'm pointing the edge directly at the, the objective, not like to the side like you see, but I'm pointing it up like this. Because this way, I can really move it around subtly and change the, the lighting and hold it in my hand like this, and in my... I steady my elbows and when I get up to 22. Right now we're at uh, 1, so well, I'm, I'm actually pretty good at this. been doing it a long time. But when you move it around like this, you can get a real good sense for the hills on the bevel. Okay, this one is um, interesting looking. Looks like somebody's been using it to practice honing a bunch of times. I wouldn't mail that to a customer, that's for damn sure. But let's go take a look at the Facker Bite. Isn't that nice sound? All right, we're taking a look here, Superior Shea fans and our humans. And they, did, they didn't ride up on the stabilizer at all. Very good job. Better job than me. It's a really short bow, I would estimate. Not more than one half of a millimeter, which is really small for a 6 8 razor. So, uh, I am going to make that a little wider by starting with the two meter hone and I'll stay on that two meter hone until I'm gonna have to stop and use this thing off camera a bunch of times but I just want to get that bevel a little bit wider and then we'll come and cut cut from that wide position toward the front and then finish on the old Arkansas <laughs> 